Today, we're going to look at an overview of Kerberos authentication. This is not SaaS specific and just looks at Kerberos in general. In this session, we will introduce the different components of Kerberos and take a first look at the different messages transmitted as part of a Kerberos authentication exchange. I'm Stuart Rogers with SAS, and this is the Technical Insights and Expertise Series. Let's start by listing the components we will be considering for this overview of Kerberos authentication. First, we have the Kerberos Key Distribution Center, or KDC. On the KDC, we have two separate services running. The first is the authentication service, and the second is the ticket granting service. We will not specifically call out one operating system over another, or one Kerberos implementation over another. Throughout, we will try to be as generic as possible. Next, we have the client, where our end user is located. This could be an actual client PC, or another server where the client process is running. Finally, we have the server, where the server process, the end user on the client, wants to connect to. So, here we have the three heads of the Kerberos protocol. The KDC, the client, and the server. The next part of our overview is to talk about keys. Kerberos relies upon strong encryption, and for the encryption to work, we need to have keys used by those encryption algorithms. We have two different groupings of keys. The first grouping of keys are long-term keys. As the name suggests, the lifetime of these keys is relatively long-term. These long-term keys are synonymous with passwords. The other grouping are session keys. And as the name suggests, these session keys are short-lived and unique to each session. Within the long-term keys, we have the long-term key for the ticket granting service. This is associated with the password for the account running the ticket granting service on the KDC. The service long-term key is a key associated with the service the end user is going to connect to. Again, this is associated with the password of the account or object representing the service in the KDC's database. Finally, for long-term keys, we have the key associated with the end user. This is associated with the password of the end user in Kerberos. For session keys, we first have a session key specific to our end user's connection to the service. This service session key will have a short lifetime and will be unique to the individual end user's connection to the service. Our final key is the ticket granting service session key. Again, a short lived key, this is associated with the end user's individual connection with the ticket granting service. In the next sections, when we look at the messages involved in Kerberos authentication, we will see how the different keys are used to encrypt messages sent between the three heads of the Kerberos system. Whilst Kerberos uses strong encryption on the content of the messages, the names of the messages in the next section can be seen in a network trace. This can be useful for troubleshooting Kerberos authentication issues as it allows you to understand how far the process has gone before running into problems. The first set of messages we will consider are those used to carry out the initial authentication of the end user. The Authentication Service Exchange. The KRB AS request is the request sent to the authentication service running on a KDC when a Kerberos principal, our end user, initially authenticates. The KRB AS request message can contain an optional authenticator. 
This is not required, but is specified by the authentication service with a pre-auth required message in response to an initial attempt to authenticate. If the authenticator is required, it will contain several pieces of information and normally a timestamp from the client machine. The content of the authenticator is encrypted using the long-term key of the user. The message is created and encrypted by the client machine. The content is then decrypted by the authentication service running on the KDC. This means the authentication service must have access to the same long-term key for the user to be able to successfully decrypt the message. By using the same key to encrypt and decrypt the message, we ensure that both parties have access to the same long-term key without having to send the long-term key across the network. The response sent by the authentication service is a KRB AS response. Within the response is a copy of the session key the client will later use in communications with the ticket granting service. This is encrypted with the user's long-term key. The second part of the response is the ticket granting ticket. The idea for the ticket granting ticket is that this will be used for all subsequent requests to authenticate to specific services. The TGT includes information about the end user as well as a second copy of the ticket granting service session key. All this information is encrypted with a different long-term key. This time, the long-term key of the ticket granting service is used to encrypt the content. The authentication service on the KDC encrypts the TGS session key with the user's long-term key which means the client which has access to the user's long-term key is able to decrypt the message and extract the ticket granting service session key. Since this is encrypted with the user's long-term key, no one else is able to extract this session key. Equally, the authentication service creates the TGT and encrypts this with the long-term key of the ticket granting service. The difference here is that the client cannot decrypt the ticket granting ticket. Only the ticket granting service will be able to decrypt the TGT and get at the content. So in the response, we have two pieces of information and only one of those is accessible to the client. The second, the TGT, is kept encrypted by the client for later use. Now, the initial authentication can take place at any time and does not have to be directly related to the next set of messages. The ticket granting service exchange is a request and response sent between the client and the ticket granting service on the KDC when an already authenticated principal or end user, wants to authenticate to a service. The initial request for this is the KRB TGS request. As before, the first part of the message is an authenticator, including information about the end user and often a timestamp from the local client. Notice this time the authenticator is encrypted with the ticket granting service session key that the client received in the previous KRB AS response. So the end user's long term key is not used this time. The second part of the request is the copy of the TGT. Since the client was not able to decrypt this, this is sent exactly as the client received it in the KRB AS response. The authenticator is encrypted by the client, which holds a copy of the ticket granting service session key. 
it gets decrypted by the ticket granting service running on the KDC. Remember, it was the authentication service that encrypted the ticket granting ticket. And the ticket granting service is then able to decrypt the ticket granting ticket using the long term key of the ticket granting service. Strictly speaking, the TGT is decrypted first by the ticket granting service so that it can extract the ticket granting service session key from within inside the TGT. The TGS session key is thus extracted and is then used to decrypt the authenticator sent by the client. This means that the ticket granting service does not need to keep and maintain a collection of those session keys. Each time it needs to use a session key, it can obtain it from within the TGT. This also means that the KRB TGS request can be sent to a different KDC to the one used for the initial authentication. The response sent by the ticket granting service is the KRB TGS response. Within the response sent to the client is another session key. This session key will be used with the service the end user wants to authenticate to. This service session key is encrypted with the ticket granting service session key. Also in the response is the service ticket the end user will use to authenticate to the service. This is encrypted with the long term key of the service. So, like the TGT, the client is unable to decrypt the content of the service ticket. The service session key is encrypted with the ticket granting service session key by the ticket granting service, which can then be decrypted by the client, which holds a copy of the same ticket granting service session key. The service ticket is also encrypted by the ticket granting service, but can only be decrypted by the service and not the client, since the client does not have the long term key of the service. Using the service long term key to encrypt the service session key inside the service ticket ensures only the specified service will be able to decrypt the service ticket and means the service does not need to communicate directly with the KDC. Until now, all the communication has been between the client and the KDC. Now we'll look at the Kerberos message exchange between the client and the server hosting the service the end user needs to authenticate to. In the Kerberos protocol, the request from the client to the server is a KRB AP request. As with the other requests, this KRB AP request contains an authenticator, which along with other content may contain a timestamp. This time, the authenticator is encrypted using the service session key. Remember, this was provided to the client in the KRB TGS response. Also, the client sends the service ticket obtained in the KRB TGS response. The client is not able to decrypt the service ticket since this is encrypted using the long term key associated with the service. So, it's the client that encrypts the authenticator, which will then be decrypted by the service they connect to. The service ticket was encrypted by the ticket granting service and can only be decrypted by the correct service. Just like the TGT we looked at before, the service ticket is decrypted first using the long term key of the service. This allows the service to extract the service session key from within the service ticket and use this 
to decrypt the authenticator. If you are looking at a network trace of the Kerberos messages, you are unlikely to see the KRB AP request message being sent by the client to the server. This request is most often wrapped inside the protocol being used by the client to connect to the service. This might be the GSS API protocol, for example, with something like Kerberized SSH, or Spinago for a web application. The Kerberos protocol defines an optional response from the server to the client. This optional response allows for the mutual authentication of the service to the end user. In the Kerberos protocol, the optional response is the KRB AP response message. The message only contains an authenticator encrypted with the service session key. As with the other authenticators, this can include a timestamp from the server hosting the service. The authenticator is encrypted by the service since this has access to the service session key after having successfully decrypted the service ticket. It is decrypted by the client, since this also has the service session key, from the KRB TGS response. This allows the client to know that the service was the correct service to send the service ticket to, since the service was able to extract the session key and use it to encrypt the authenticator. Again, if you're looking at a network trace of the Kerberos messages, you are unlikely to see this optional KRB AP response message being sent by the server to the client. As before, this response is most often wrapped inside the protocol used by the client to connect to the service. This completes our overview of Kerberos authentication. In our next session, we will look at different process flows showing how these message exchanges used in the Kerberos protocol are put into action. For further information, you can see the following resources. The Kerberos protocol version 5 is defined in RFC 4120, available here. The GSS API protocol is defined in RFC 4121, available here. And Microsoft have a great guide explaining how Windows implements Kerberos, available here. Hopefully, this has given you a good overview of the messages and use of encryption within the Kerberos authentication protocol. I hope this will be of use to you if you need to troubleshoot issues with Kerberos. Remember, the encryption algorithms used in the different parts of the messages are exchangeable. So it's important that the different parties are using algorithms that both sides can process. Also, since the authenticators seen in most requests often include a timestamp, Ensure the system time is synchronized across all parties. Thank you, and check back with your global enablement and learning team for more technical insights.